Welcome, friends, to this, the last episode of Pro Tips from the Icebox. I'm still Scott Casella. If you are watching this, I thank you so much for coming with me so far. I really hope that you've learned something from this list. I've learned a lot. I've updated this list at least five times during this process. So it's been really good for me, and I hope you learned something too. It is Sunday evening, and I pack the car at dawn, and we leave by 10 tomorrow. So this afternoon I went shopping for my fresh vegetables, and I'm putting the food together. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in this episode. Colorado River. I put dots next to the items that I have, and I leave little boxes next to the items that I still need to get. Today I went to the grocery store, and the groceries section was largely, I mean mostly, unchecked. So I went and I bought everything that you see on that section. Uh, celery, I bought two stalks, and I actually cut them down just a little bit so they fit perfectly in the box. Two bags of potatoes, I bought, I don't know, a half dozen beets. I have a squash, I bought a 20-pack of tortillas, I bought a big block of... Nice, uh, well, there's some aged cheddar. I went and spent a couple extra dollars on some aged cheddar because that's nice. Obviously, chips and crackers all over the place. Little olive pouches I couldn't find, so I got little olive containers. I ended up with three cabbages because I had a full cabbage and a half left over last year that I, I didn't really realize that until I watched that cooler footage um, earlier this week when we looked at that. Two bags of onions, uh, a bunch of radishes. Garlic, I will tell you, I did. this is the first year I'm not bringing fresh garlic. I bought a, a plastic uh, container full of minced garlic, so that's going to be easy for me while I'm out there. Ginger, I bought a huge ginger root. For me, ginger is not just a seasoning, but an ingredient, so I'll be eating a lot of ginger down there. Brussels sprouts are always some of my favorites, so I got a bunch of those. Um, ended up with two nice bars of chocolate. I do not have a sweet tooth, but a little nice piece of chocolate here and there will be nice. Um... And I did end up with two dried tomato pouches as well as some tomato paste that I already had. I picked up a rutabaga, a parsnip, and I'm also bringing some, uh, just some white flour in a bag. I'm bringing yeast. I'm going to try making bread in the pressure cooker. It's an experiment. I also might just put some sliced or diced potatoes. I'll, I'll lightly bread, uh, flour those and fry them up for a breakfast option. <laughs> anyway, all that is what's in the bags. And what I'm doing now, what you're looking at, is I take everything that we've already cut up. If you remember, we've done those 30 bags of rice, or the you know 20 bags of rice and 10 bags of pasta, all those 30 bags of granola. And now I'm cutting up all of the lunch bars that I bought for the past you know month or two. Every time I saw a box of bars on sale, I bought them. And here I'm cutting them all up, I'm cutting everything into, into fourths and quarters. And I'm going to, in a moment, uh, do it all up into four segments. So I've just opened up my first bag bucket. I've got three of these Gamma Seal buckets. And I put a garbage bag in the bucket. And then I take all the dry food, so the rice and the pasta and the dry snacks, and I put those bags inside of another bag that is a, like, um, a freezer's bag. And then that bag I put inside of the garbage bag. And then that garbage bag, as you see here, gets twisted up and put off to the side, and then the lid goes on to that Gamma Seal bucket. So even if some water gets into the bucket, let's say you flip, and worst case, the bucket gets flooded. Well, you've got a garbage bag around all of your food. And if some water gets into that garbage bags, then you've got um, the freezer bags, which are zipped tight. And if a little water happens to get into that, chances are it won't get into all of the bags of individual food in there. So if the cooler is lost and or your dry box gets wet, having the food broken up into these four separate isolated containers guarantees you that you'll have a distribution of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks uh, along the way. And that is the, you know, that's what I've been doing. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do, but that's what I've been doing and it's been working for me. So as you can see, my cooler is mostly empty. I've got that bucket full of edge. I've got some things in the lower left. My dry box is half empty. I've got those three gamma buckets which are off screen here, but those are holding all my dry food. And I have more food than I need. I did the math 
on what I've got in there. And I have spent, I spent 50 bucks at Walmart, 80 bucks at Buy Mart, 120 bucks at Winco once, and another 150 at Winco the second time. So altogether, it's coming in just at 400 bucks. And that includes beer for me to eat for the month. And I'm eating, well, you've seen everything I'm going to eat. So that's the that's the food and alcohol budget is 400 bucks. That does not include the total trip cost to the gasoline to get down there, the shuttle costs for the shuttle company, as well as the Groover rentals and the Forest Service fees. But that is the um, that's the extent of what I have done, and that is we've checked off every single item on the list. So thanks for doing that with me. And if you want to stick around, I'm just going to do some final thoughts, like after the fact thoughts. All right, it is T minus eight hours until I leave, so I'm pretty much just going to wrap this up, go to sleep, and wake up and do gear work again, and then drive for three days. So I, this has been a marathon for me. I have to say that putting this video series together took about as much time as I spent actually putting the gear together. So I really hope someone out there appreciates what I've done. I hope you learned something, and I hope that um, this makes your trip easier somewhere out there in, in the world if it comes to it. Um, I put a pre-release of this up on a, the Facebook group for the private boaters, and one of my uh, associates and cohorts wrote back that it would be nice for me to mention things that I've brought in the past that did not work. So stuff that we thought was going to be great, and we brought it down there, and it ended up broken and wet <laughs> and disappointing. So um, uh, let me say this. I've seen on Tarpology. Right? There are some people out there, this guy Chuck that I know, he's a wizard with putting up tarps. A lot of people fail at putting up tarps. It's a, it can take a long time. It's a lot of effort. You're sitting there dealing with the wind and the knots and everything. So um, I really think you're better off with the pre-built shelter. That's my thought on tarps. But they're really cool when they're done. If you have a big group and a lot of hands, I think it's, it's a fine way to check it out. Um, I did not mention this earlier, but on the boat section, on the bottom, I didn't, I didn't point it out to you, but I have a bucket, the ship's bucket, essentially. And this, I just take an old Folgers plastic uh, coffee can, I drill a little hole in it and put it on a lanyard, and that stays on the ship. It is useful for so many things to have a little bucket. I'm going to give you two or three options right here for what to do with it. Number one, you can hose your boat off. You can just take, uh, you know, buckets full of water and get the sand off your boat. Number two, if you are in a large group and someone needs to urinate and you're bashful, you can go to your knees or squat in the boat and you can pee into the bucket and then dump the bucket over the side of the boat so you don't have to pee directly in your boat or hang it out over the side in front of your group if that's a thing for you. C, f ladies, if you do not want to deal with the female urination device, which I know can be a hassle, um, if you bring the ship's bucket, which is you know a wider than a wide mouth, it's a bucket, you can stick that into the vestibule of your tent and use that for your evening urination device. And lastly, you can use that same bucket for laundry. I'm only bringing, I used to only bring three pairs of socks and underwear. This group has committed me to bringing a fourth pair, but I'll still wash socks and underwear. And that ship's bucket with a little Dr. Bronner's, and you know, you've got a little laundry bucket to use. So ship's bucket, very important. Um, I've brought a hammock twice, and I've never set the hammock up, so I'm not bringing a hammock again. I brought a sweet little kite, little trainer kite out there once, which was a lot of fun until it hit the water, so I'm not bringing one of those again. I've done dehydrated food. I've seen the dehydrated food. A lot of people go dehydrated food, and um, it works fine, but it's a lot of effort up front, and... I don't know, you're either doing the work at home and then dehydrating and you're still going to sit there and rehydrate and cook. It's easier because you're just boiling water, uh, but it's not for me. And lastly, on books, only bring one book. You can trade books with other people in your group. Whew, that's it, guys. We'll see you out there. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>